This is just a quick update on the progress I've made on the ADM 3A PCB project. If you haven't seen the previous videos, then I am reproducing this board. It's the main board out of uh, an ADM 3A dumb terminal. And I've chosen this particular board for several reasons. One is because I really like the terminal, it's very flexible. And I don't intend to reproduce the entire terminal, I'm not going to uh, reproduce the case. I may well reproduce an LCD version of the CRT module that has the same scan frequency etc um, that can be used with something like this. Uh, that's for another project but um, I have various needs for something like that. Uh, but for this project I've uh, got to the stage now where I can uh, now order some bare boards and I just thought I'd uh, go through the basic process I've taken to get this far. It has been uh, quite a, a lengthy task. We'll have a quick look at the CAD system in a minute, but just the general process is I get the physical layout for the board, the sizes uh, and shape for the PCB. I then capture the schematic into my PCB CAD system. Now these uh, schematics were hand drawn, so I suspect that the CAD um, system schematics I now have may well be the only electronic versions of these other than uh, image copies. Um, but this is now more or less complete so the process I go through and there are quite a few of these schematics on this uh, uh, project uh, is I go through and I trace out each, in each individual track I reproduce this in the CAD system and then I colour over each track as I complete it. Uh, one of the complications with this project is that uh, if you've ever worked on projects of this type and back in the 70s when CAD systems weren't particularly widely used or available, um, it was easier to uh, write down the name of a net as a connection rather than physically draw it out. So in other words, uh, on these schematics, a lot of the connections are defined by way of definitions rather than being shown as physical connections and that can cause some issues there are various typos on here uh, and also on various parts of the schematic where it gets quite uh, busy it's quite difficult to see what the connection should be so it's then useful having the original board and I can cross reference the two and see uh, what the general um, consensus if you like is of what the connections should be very time consuming but I've been through this I've captured it and what I then do is I take the CAD system uh, schematics that I then have and I do the reverse and I start deleting tracks from a backup copy of it. So I'll delete them one at a time seeing where they go and working on the assumption that what I put into the CAD system was correct I should end up if I follow all the connections through and delete them as I uh, find them is I should end up with a completely bare um, CAD schematic. Uh, so I've done that and it worked out fine. Uh, so what I put in seems to match what's expected and what's on the board. I then check on the image of the board I've created to make sure that all the tracks appear to be going where they should be. This board is a slightly different version from the schematics I have, so some of the tracks were slightly different, um, but I've hopefully resolved what the differences are. Some were just, I think, uh, for easing uh, the layout of the board. Uh, the actual uh, electrical connections were the same. So I've now done that. And the board is now at the stage where I've got on to the uh, silt screen part of the uh, design. I've had to make some changes along the way. As I've gone through this, I've checked each component to make sure they are um, available at least in, in part uh, and by that what I mean is you can find them somewhere at a sensible price. Uh, if it was a, a case of there's only one I could find or couldn't find any then there's not really much point in me uh, proceeding down that line because it means I'd have a board that no one can actually make. So the main changes I've made are I've replaced the mask ROMs with a single more modern uh, EEPROM and that means that um, I can reproduce what's in these in a more modern ROM. 
make the image for the ROM available, uh, but also the character set can be modified by whoever builds the board. And I've included a small switch to enable switching between different character sets. Uh, the connectors at the back, the serial connectors, I've kept pretty much the same. The only real difference is I've retained a full complement of pins. On the connectors on the actual board, a lot of the pins have been cut off and uh, I didn't really want anyone to have to do that, so uh, I've kept all the pins. There was no real advantage to removing them anyway. Uh, also the heat sinks, I couldn't really find a sensible source for the heat sinks, so I've gone with an alternative. It's very slightly smaller, it's exactly the same height and it's the same depth, uh, but it's not quite as wide, it's about 3mm narrower. But because of the style, they're actually more efficient in terms of cooling than the original. So these um, will fit on the board, so the board footprint that I've made uh, matches these, and these are quite cheap and very easy to find. Uh, the only other real changes were the uh, capacitors. Mostly I've kept to the same size and format. You can still get uh, these types of capacitors. The main one was the very large capacitor. Uh, you can get these but they're ridiculously expensive and there's really no need uh, these days to have one that large unless you really want to so you can fit one of these if you want uh, but I've also included a footprint in that location for a more modern alternative it is a lot smaller uh, so it will change the appearance somewhat but um, it's uh, I think a, uh, a sensible choice uh, you can get these for a few pounds, or I think the only one I could find of these was something like £65, and um, there was only two I could find, so uh, I have uh, given the alternative for a sensible alternative to that. Uh, all the rest of it is exactly the same. The uh, Even the track uh, layout, the form, I've kept the same, so it's uh, these nice wavy serpentine tracks. I've kept the layout as close as I can. The only real changes I've had to make were underneath the keyboard area where I've included an extra connector so a secondary keyboard a PCB can be fitted uh, on the assumption that you want me to find these keys. I have retained the original layout for these keys so if you can get a set of these keys you can build it uh, exactly as it is. So I've got that far with the board layout. And one of the things I do before I order a board like this, because it's such a big board, uh, I want to make um, sure that uh, I've given them as much as I can every chance that I haven't made any mistakes. So what I've done is printed off a full-sized image of the board from the CAD system. Uh, and then what I can do is compare this directly against the original PCB and it just gives me an idea that uh, I haven't missed anything or made any, any major errors. So as you can see, um, it's looking quite uh, promising. It's exactly the same size. All the holes for mounting, etc., line up. Um, I've added a lot of the uh, same graphics that were on the silt screen for the original board, so it should look uh, very similar when it's done. The board's um, been drawn out in zones, uh, and I've retained that. There are various options uh, that can be fitted, and I've retained those as well, so though they're, they're not necessary. I have put in place all the tracks and connectors for the various options that can be fitted. Uh, and I've done that throughout, so every single option that was available on the original, um, I've included the connections for it. And uh, so that's it. The next step is to get some uh, bare boards ordered, and um, then I will start to assemble a prototype make sure I haven't made any mistakes and I'll post videos as I go through that process and hopefully we'll see this come to life and we'll end up with a, uh, a working ADM3 board. One addition I've made to this, um, mostly for practicality, is I've added an additional connector and it's labelled here as uh, VGA and so this connector here in the corner is the connector that goes to the original CRT display um, but you may well not have one of those or you might not want to use it uh, and so I've included a connector here that will be that you'll be able to use to connect the board to a, a VGA monitor because of the output for the VGA you will need a multi-sync monitor um, but at least it does give the option to use a standard monitor with this so uh, as I say, a future project, I'll be making a, a small LCD 
uh, monitor that or display that can be used with this, but um, it should in theory be usable using a multi-sync uh, monitor. Okay, any comments, uh, welcome. We'll just pop over and have a quick look at the CAD system. I'll show you some of the detail of the uh, board and um, the next videos we'll look at actually assembling one. So this is the board in the CAD system. I'll just turn the copper layers off so we can see the silk screen. And as you can see, it's quite a, uh, a busy board. There's a lot on here, uh, but it is a very large board. I've kept the silk screen layout as true to the original as I could. Um, a few minor changes here and there, but it is um, fundamentally identical to the original board. All the identification uh, logos, etc., are on the uh, board as well. So, for example, each IC has its actual uh, 74LS number on the silt screen. Uh, all the components have their value on the silt screen as well. So, that's quite a nice feature. Makes it very easy when it comes to assembling the board. Uh, I've kept the original key layout, uh, but I've added this connector at the bottom. Uh, which will allow for the addition of a second board for a standalone keyboard. So that's the uh, keys I was showing in previous videos that will allow uh, a board to be sat on top of this and any sorts of keys that can be obtained uh, can be put onto a, a separate board. Uh, and that means it uh, gives full flexibility to whoever's going to build this as to whether they try to find the original keys or get the uh, additional keyboard PCB and use the easily obtainable keys instead. I've included the options. Uh, these are all connected up. I'll just turn the copper back on. And so all the copper is in place. And to give you an idea of how the layout compares to the original, if we take an area of the board, it doesn't really matter which area, we'll just take a, an area at random, and I'll turn the image back on. So this is the image I made of the uh, board. And for things like the radius of, t of um, uh, bends on the tracks, then what I've been doing is setting each one to match uh, exactly what the radius was of the bend on the original track. I've got a few of these to finish off. Uh, but as you can see, uh, once you set the correct radius, then you get very nice looking uh, tracks that really do match the original very closely. It's very time consuming, but uh, I think it will be worth it uh, once it's all done. Um, but this is now pretty much complete. I've got maybe another half an hour of this to go through and um, it's then ready to go and get them manufactured. Uh, as I said, I've modified the footprints of the heat sinks so that they match what uh, you can actually get hold of these days. I couldn't find a, a sensible supply of the originals uh, and I've included the uh, additional VGA uh, output connector. Uh, that's not on the original, but um, as I say, it should make it very easy to hook this up to a, a more standard monitor. Uh, and also, of course, I've included all the pins in the uh, RS-232 connectors. All the designations are the same, so for the um, options, all the text, I've kept that as true to the original as I could. Um, so I'm hoping that um, there won't be too many mistakes on this, and in the next few videos then I'll go through assembling one, uh, testing it, and if anyone's interested, I will then make them available.